The Seven Years' War doesn't end until three years after the conquest of Canada. In the peace negotiations, entire lands are bartered. One of the dilemmas, who will take Canada? Or rather, is Canada worth taking? Many Englishmen argue that a more valuable prize lies in the Caribbean. The tiny island of Guadeloupe, captured from the French, produces sugar worth twice as much as all of Canada's furs. Finally, the choice is made by France's delegate at the peace talks, the Duc de Choiseul. The king cedes and guarantees to the King of England, without restriction, Canada as it was possessed, or deemed to be possessed, by France. France prefers to get Guadeloupe back, leaving Canada to Britain. But there is one Canadian asset France does want, the right to fish in the Gulf of St. Lawrence, along with two tiny islands off the Newfoundland coast. The only part of Canada France wants is the fish. The British aren't sure what to do with a colony of French Catholics, but Benjamin Franklin reassures London the Canadians will not be a problem for long. Many will choose to remove if they can be allowed to sell their lands, improvements and effects. The rest in that thin, settled country will, within half a century, be blended and incorporated with our people in both language and manners. The new British governor is a general who spent two years of his life invading, bombarding and occupying Quebec. But James Murray's biggest challenge will be governing the peace, and he will find an improbable ally. Olivier Briand is a quiet, private man who has now inherited the leadership of Canada's Catholics. He must ensure the church's survival. He orders his parishes to accept the new king. The god of armies, who extends or restricts at his pleasure the boundaries of empires, having by his eternal decrees put us under the domination of his Britannic majesty, it is our duty, based on natural law, to be interested in all that concerns him. We order you to submit to the king and to all those who share his authority. Years ago, Briand tended the French wounded on the battlefields of Quebec, while Murray commanded the British forces there. Now the two men form an alliance that will grow into a lifetime friendship. Monsieur Briand has constantly acted with a candor, moderation and disinterestedness which bespeak him a worthy, honest man. And I know of none of his gown in the province so justly deserving of the royal favor. But a crisis is building for James Murray in an unlikely quarter. English merchants from Boston and London have been moving into Canada, eager to profit from the conquest. All have their fortunes to make, and I hear that few of them are solicitous about the means where the end can be obtained. In general, the most immoral collection of men I ever knew. The most hated of all is Thomas Walker of Boston. In two short years, he has alienated everyone, even the British Army. English soldiers go so far as to slice off his ear and toss it on the table, saying, this is for supper. I therefore stay at home and never stir out of town without two or three friends, each armed with a sword and pistols. I am never out of my own house after dark, and in going about any ordinary business, 
always carry a brace of loaded pistols in my pockets and a sword by my side. Walker and the English merchants want to control everything in the new regime, including the justice system. They insist that all juries be picked only from the Protestant English, even if there are only 200 of them. But Governor Murray surprises everyone. He sides with the Catholic Canadians. As there are but 200 Protestant subjects in the province, it is thought unjust to exclude the new Roman Catholic subjects to sit upon juries. As such an exclusion would constitute the said 200 Protestants, perpetual judges of the lives and property of not only the 80,000 new subjects, but likewise of all the military in the province. The English merchants are enraged and complain to the king. We believe that the admitting of persons of the Roman religion as jurors is an open violation of our most sacred laws and liberties and tending to the utter subversion of the Protestant religion and to His Majesty's power, authority, right and possession of the province to which we belong. The Canadians fight back. Ninety-four prominent citizens sign a counter-petition. One of them is the merchant Pierre Guy. Who are those who wish to have us proscribed? About 30 English merchants, of whom 15 at the most are settled here. Who are the proscribed? 10,000 heads of families who feel nothing but submission to the order of your majesty. Canadian merchants also worry about economic ruin. In the Quebec warehouse of Francois Babi, business is not going well. Business is advancing very slowly in this country. Money is rarer than ever, and bad faith is everywhere. And the English merchants are advancing new demands. They want an elected assembly, one in which only they can sit, since Catholics are barred from holding office in the British Empire. Murray urges London to resist all the merchants' demands. Little, very little, will content the new subjects. But nothing will satisfy the licentious fanatics trading here but the expulsion of the Canadians, who are perhaps the bravest and best race upon the globe. A race who uh, indulge with a few privileges that the laws of England deny to Roman Catholics at home would soon get the better of every national antipathy to the conquerors and become the most faithful and the most useful set of men in this American empire. Thomas Walker sails to London to fight for Protestant juries, a Protestant assembly, and the removal of Governor Murray. He loses on all counts but one. James Murray is recalled. Murray writes to his old Roman Catholic ally, Jean-Olivier Brion, who has just been anointed Bishop of Quebec. I have ardently wished to take your hand and sincerely congratulate you and your promotion, an event which has made me very happy, as I have done all in my power to contribute to it. My Canadien, I recommend to your care. They have behaved so as to fix my affection for them forever. James Murray will never see Canada again. His departure is a triumph for the English merchants, but they have yet to meet the new governor. <laughs>